Welcome to another day in the matrix. <laughs> Waters above crypto. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I, I know you weren't. That's why I wanted to do it because I. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, starting off with a bang, man. Yeah, I wanted to get I wanted to get the party started, man, because you and I haven't joined forces in a while, and I I cannot even duplicate your amazing voice. So I figured I would just put <laughs> on. I would. <laughs> I would put that out there as the the beginning of this podcast, but. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome out to another podcast from Jordan and myself, The Great Waters Above Crypto. Jordan, my my grand friend who I've never, the, the great thing is see, we become amazing friends without ever meeting in person. That will eventually happen, but um, our minds think so much alike. And, um, you know, big shout out to everybody out there that has supported his channel, my channel. I, I know you get feedback, I do, and I, I get a lot of feedback from people loving your content and then you know they they want more of these podcasts so ladies and gentlemen here we are once again joining forces with podcast number 10 this is podcast number 10 wow top, wow right right and the topic for this discussion will be led to gold this was your choice um, and, a, and a very hefty one, very heavy one, but very beautiful one. So what's going on in your world, my friend? It's been a minute, you know, you haven't been on here in a while. Yeah. Well, first off, thanks for reconnecting. I'm excited for podcast number 10. Um, everything's been great in my world. I'm just staying focused on my purpose, not getting distracted and, uh, you know, just, just motivated and inspired every day, staying in my lane. How about you? Yeah, man. Same here. Doing my thing, doing my shindigs every day. Uh, content, content, content. And this is another piece of content that I know, you know, people will enjoy. So um, it's just, it's really great to connect with you because I know this conversation that we're about to have is going to be very dynamic, explosive. Um, we're going to get spicy, as you call it, <laughs> uh, I'm sure, as we go down this hole. Um but it's it's really such a great topic to talk about. I mean, where where do you want to begin with this thing? I mean, lead to gold. I, I've already done a decode on that, ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't seen it, check out my lead to gold decoded. Um, Jordan Jordan has told me yesterday, and this was this is how random we are. We spoke yesterday, like we do, often do on Sundays, right, Jordan? We typically talk talk on Sundays, <laughs> kind of a pattern. <laughs> um, and. Uh, we, so, uh, hey, let's do a podcast. Like, you're free tomorrow? Yeah. And that's just how it is. It's perfect. Um, and the lead to gold thing came up. So we just decided to to jump in and, and do this topic. But where do we where do we kind yeah, of I think this, man? I think it started actually from us being in the middle of a prior podcast. And we were just thinking about how great it would be to come together on that concept, you know, and our spin on it our individual spin on it which is the beautiful thing about me coming together with you is you're a master decoder and you're really really dialed in to the numbers and connecting in these ways that few people could even wrap their head around and it's you know it's such a gift to the world what you do with your um work and you talked about coming out with a decode from lead to gold and i told you okay well this is a part of my new expansion mastermind course that i was already working on at the time back when we had that podcast and um since then i've released that course i have the chapter out there it was called alchemy of self and um you know, it's it's given it enough time now to simmer and whoever invested in my art and decided to move forward with um, purchasing that course. And I really took a lot of time to just figure out what that concept meant to me, you know, and it's divine timing now that we're getting together uh, because I know you put out your decode. I decided to not watch it just because I wanted us to have this podcast. I wanted us to come together uh, about this topic, share where we're at with it. And then, of course, later on, I'd be going through uh, your decode to see the numbers that, that you've got. And I'm sure you're going to go over some of it today. But it was really just sparked out of the randomness of a prior conversation that we had. And I think it's a I think it's a thing that many people are, are interested in knowing about, whether they're into alchemy or they're into uh, metaphysics or even if they're just a decoder. And I think maybe the good place to start with it is like, what does that mean to you? What does from lead to gold mean? 
Yeah, that's what it was. It was, um, I'm not going to watch your decode because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing lead to gold kind of stuff. So I remember that's what it was. Um, right. And, and, and that is it. Like, like, ladies and gentlemen, you're constantly utilizing this lead to gold concept here through, I mean, the big one for me is the exchange of energy constantly as a human being. And then mm -hmm. we can get into, you know, what are you being influenced by? Because whatever you're being influenced by is kind of getting your lead. You're giving it, you know, the mm -hmm. lead's the gas, and then you, it gets transmuted into gold. And, you know, I mean, I think what's really fascinating is, <laughs> um, these people that are out there on YouTube or whatever, and they're, they're bashing like, you know, your work, my work, they're, they're purposely making videos, uh, of what they don't like, or, or saying this or that, or speculations or assumptions. And that is a true, the true essence of lead to gold, because when you become a, a conscious being of lead to gold and you're this creator content creator, like, you know, Jordan and I are, you're just going to transmute that energy and glad like, so mm -hmm. the haters out there, if you're listen, if you're one of those people, um, the energy you're putting out your hate energy, I'm just going to Jordan and I, we're just going to transmute it and use it like gas. You know, you, thanks for your gas. Thanks for giving me your, your lead. I'm just going to flip it into gold and it's just going to make me more powerful. It's going to make me bigger and stronger. So that's really magic one-on-one, but that's really, to me, that's the true essence of lead to gold. That's so, that's so important. And I, I would love to continue to build off of that. For me, the breakdown had a lot to do with just me looking at the words, you know? So part of that chapter that I created called Alchemy of Self uh, started out with this idea that you were either, that you either lead to gold or you're led to gold. Mm, yeah. Thinking about just the word lead and the word led and not looking at it from the metals perspective necessarily, but just kind of breaking down the, that one particular word, lead or lead. Mm -hmm. And this taking personal responsibility thing and becoming self-reliant or, or being a leader amongst subjects or amongst followers and how this is something that is almost perhaps biological. It could be to do with your uh, astrological sign, you know, whatever it is. But it's a concept that for me, I noticed could be um, a unique spin on the term led to gold. Mm. So I continue to break it down even further where it's either you're being led or you're following or you're leading and you have leadership. And this is a quality that few have, right? Being a leader, a true leader is, <laughs> I mean, it's, we're really talking about the, the few here. And it's clearly not a leadership, uh, a, a leadership trait to be a hater, right? A real right. leader would never, would never be a hater. They either are inspired by what they see, they're motivated by what they see. And, and that works in both ways, right? As yep. a leader, when you see something you do not like, you take an inventory, you, you, you write that down, you, you think about what you don't want to be right? It's not a moment for you to start hating on it and to start judging it and to start projecting your fears onto it. A real leader is able to see the opportunity, even in the negatives, even in the things that look ugly to them. Yeah. So I think that'd be a good place to start and kind of the idea, you know, just thinking about the word lead and led. Yeah. Those are big time aspects to consider through the rules of the language that we speak in numerology. Cause I mean, led lead piping, lead tubes, you know, lead to gold. It's spelled that L-E-A-D, which has leader in it, but lead, if you say lead to gold, you take out that A and then, you know, from a numerological standpoint, it, it changes the word depending on what cipher you use. So there is some con, there is some like aspects to this, I think through the mystical arts that has their, has their say in it. Um, and I think it's so true, you know, like, are you are you being led or are you being a leader? Really? I think that that's a big thought, big thing that anyone listening here should take into consideration based upon what Jordan just said. Are you a leader or are you being led? And then where's your gold going to end up? Who's going to get your gold? I think those are big concepts to take into consideration on a personal level here. As you listen to this podcast between Jordan and myself. 
it's it's critical that people realize that you're just you're expressing and while you express and while you observe and while you're just a part of this realm you know it all, all kind of comes back onto self so there's a big there, it always comes back to you right ultimately you're the universe experiencing watching this like unfold and that taking accountability and pointing the finger back at yourself or looking in the mirror and reflecting is a huge part of your expansion right like it's a yep. huge part of the true and the true enlightenment and i think perhaps something we could both agree on early is that your gold is you are gold you're a soul like gold is your soul and you yep. are a soul you are spirit you're not you're not logan <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, I mean, there's I mean a, gold is aura, aurum. So, I mean, there's that, the Latinized spelling of gold is aurum, which is aura. So absolutely, we have the context of spirit here. Yeah, it yeah. is you. It's your, it's your, like, your true essence. And I think that's really what's happening on the world stage. And that ties back into the earlier podcast we did of influence and deception right where we were talking a lot about how this is all about getting your attention this is all about capturing attention so if you let people capture your attention and distract you then you're being distracted by other leaders mm. right and that's that's okay if it can motivate you that's okay if you can tap into that and and be influenced by it in a way that could promote your expansion or promote your well-being or perhaps something that you could leverage on that they excel at that could develop your skills or develop your mindset or whatever it is that you're interested in mm -hmm. but a lot of the time i think we're allowing our gold to be mined without actually being consciously aware of it and when we have this desire for truth and seeking of truth which i would assume is the overwhelming majority of the people who come to my work or your work just because of how niche what we uh, specialize in is yeah. there's going to be resentment along the way in these uh, individuals because they learn about the government they learn about the apex predator they learn about all this stuff it's not taught to you in school right it's something you have to eventually like come to this information and it resonated with you and you get a choice at that moment do you want to hate these beings or do you just want to honor them for what they are and then know what you will never be and know what you will never look up to yeah and then go about your life meaning how do i go about life without letting those leaders those false leaders extract my gold <laughs> yeah. How do I become, you know, a true, a, a true leader of my own, my own vision? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's important for people to really get these concepts, the basic fundamentals of how the human body. I mean, if you just take the human body and you compare it to the engine of a car, the engine of a car starts up the compression, the combustion, the engine starts to move. It creates heat. It creates energy, which creates movement. And that's led to gold. That's that's you're taking gasoline and you're com you're doing the combustion into the chambers of the pistons with the spark plugs, and it's creating movement. And that's your gold. And that that is an internal system itself. So the body itself, the human body experience, is just like that engine. And it when you get up in the morning out of your sleep, the engine starts, and now you are doing a lead to gold situation. And it's it's always going to happen that way. And then you that's a fractal in your own Taurus field. And then when you are being influenced or you're an influencer on the world stage, now you're going into another fractal. And now you're putting the gold out onto the world stage and it just continues on and continues on inside what I believe to be this place called earth, which is a self, I think it's a self-contained system, like a terranium, like, a, mm -hmm. like a, an aquarium, you know? And mm -hmm. so there's, there's going to be these predator prey situations always inside your body, outside your body. And it's important to know, what you're giving your attention to, which we've talked about a lot in our previous podcasts, especially, you know, deception versus influence. That was a, a big one, I thought, on what you're giving your energy to and how we're being. Yeah, it's a concept that's going to, it's a concept that's going to continue to come back um, because of just where me and you were at in our journeys. You know, we decided to, to hold the torch. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, we decided to take, we, we decided to take that, take that quantum leap into taking personal responsibility for the information that we 
intake and the output, you know, in both directions. So that feedback loop is we're conscious of it and we're aware of it, not only in the basic level, but in the metaphysical perspective. And, you know, you just you kind of attract where you're at in this process. True. Yeah, no, absolutely. When you step in, when you truly embody, when you truly embody leadership, I think you start to change the way you used to perceive leadership in the past. Mm. Most definitely. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's really key, the leadership thing. Let, let's kind of move into that, right? Like, you as a listener, what kind of leader are you on the world? Do you want to be a leader first and foremost? Not everybody does. Not everybody wants to be a leader. A lot of the, as a matter of fact, most people want to just be led. <laughs> they don't want to be a leader. So you got to ask yourself, what is it that you really want? What are you built for? If you're here listening to this, you're, I would say you're a conscious individual. Um, but have you got it all figured out? Well, I don't think you ever will. I think there's always going to be things that we'll never figure out, but are you, are you going to be a leader on the world stage? Do you involve yourself in leadership? Do you have it in your charts? If you follow astrology, you know, are you heavy, um, are you heavy Aries energy, fire energy, Leo it could be any of these things. Um, one life path depend, you know, depends on getting to your soul contract. These are all layers to take into consideration. I, you know, what's really fascinating, Jordan is, um, you know, uh, when you take the numbers, um, one through nine, which, you know, are, are the basic foundational pillars of the numbers themselves, the nine is the last number. And if we're talking lead to gold, when we use the numbers zero through nine or one through nine, the one would be lead and, or the zero would be lead. And then the nine would be gold. If you take that into the tarot, the zero card is the fool card representing lead. And then the nine is the hermit card. And the hermit has a big giant lantern that it holds on top of the mountain. And it's basically, I mean, the lantern is gold, right? Because it's, it's really a fractal down below the sun. Uh, light bulbs are the personification of the sun. So you're it, just through the tarot, the simple expressions of the tarot, you're taking, you're going from the fool, the journey of the fool, all the way through the nine major arcana cards. And you end at that hermit card. And now are you taking that lantern and shining it onto the world? And are you giving your gold onto the world stage? Because I think that's really a big piece of it all. How much gold do you give to people? I mean, you you share a ton of information to all your listeners and subscribers, and you give away a lot. You, you've you dedicated you, to your craft, not only crypto, you got started there, but man, now you've moved into a real blissful place of, you know, I don't even know what word you'd even want to use um for what you're doing now right because there's there a way to captivate a word to put into you know the context of what you're doing now i don't know but you're definitely being a hermit and you're sh the beautiful thing you're sharing it with the world and i think it's an amazing place to be yeah i mean it's a it's a it's a part of like my own journey you know what i mean because as, as much as i expose where i'm at with my own kind of past and where i am present i really do it to help others unlock where they're at you know like i think that's really important i don't want to be an influencer i don't want to even though i know that that was i don't get to choose that right it's like i think yeah. um mike tyson was in a podcast one time and he was talking with somebody who was up and coming a famous athlete and he was like i don't want to be famous and mike tyson was like you don't get to choose that god does yeah <laughs> and um you know, he was just so matter of fact about it. And like, whether you're religious or not, it's irrelevant. It's just the the confidence that he had in that. And like, I agree, actually, you know, like the source, whether that's within you or you've decided for that to be outside of you, that's still your belief. And if you kind of think about where you land in life at this current moment, with all the control and all of your desire to manipulate and this, that, and the third, you still end up at a place that you could have never imagined, right? Totally. So ultimately it is up to source. <laughs> like that's totally. the beauty of it all. Uh, wh wh wherever your belief system is, whether it's w within or without. So the, I don't really, um, I don't really desire anymore to control where it goes. And that's why I've been able to shift from crypto to where I, where I'm at now, where I, I still do cover crypto, of course, and I do it for a reason. Uh, and because of an outlook I have on the world and the economy and, 
we all have to admit money plays a role in our lives, right? Like we're in this matrix, we're in the simulacrum, like we have to pay for things. Um, so it's definitely important that we look at currency as something that's important. But my overall outlook is how do we become more abundant now while we're living instead of waiting around for some idea to come true, whether that be in the markets or your investment thesis or with Jesus coming back from the dead or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, we have to be real with ourselves here. Yeah, and I think yeah. it requires us to, to just be like, oh, you know, it, whether if I was rich or whether I was poor, um, I, am I happier? Am I fulfilled? Am I, am I this, am I that? So I saw that in humanity and I decided, you know, somebody has to speak about it and somebody has to speak about it in a way that isn't just completely, um, tied to marketing gimmicks. Right. Right. I, I was laughing because it reminded me <laughs> of the conversation we had yesterday about, um, <laughs> people just riding the coattails of like, the possibility of these great changes happening like yeah the white hats are going to come in and they're going to do this and then you know Biden's gonna do <laughs> yeah. this. you're like dude biden's still president nobody's come out of the woodworks to do anything just you know right now and 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 that's like this is all led to gold ladies and gentlemen because if you're paying attention to the mainstream you're feeding it there is no yeah. rot that you cannot there's no manipulating what i'm telling you it's like well no i can tune into the news and i'm not gonna you know give it no if you tune into anything mainstream and you start talking about these possibilities which we're all guilty of we all do it because it's fun right you're like oh what could happen and we we as decoders we break down things so it's inevitable but if you're consistently mm -hmm. doing that talking about these ideas and you're invested in you know the conscious uh the collective consciousness your your led to gold is is literally feeding that story and you become a little minion if you will you know you're literally no, you're feeding you're market. literally feeding that beast right yeah you're you're literally a a, a marketeer and you don't <laughs> and you don't even get paid for it you don't even, yeah, you're not even you're getting paid billboard. for it yeah you're 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 literally you got hired by the mainstream and they're not even paying you any endorse you're not getting paid jack but you're out there marketing they're, they're soliciting all their services it's just so funny man and that's led to gold and i think it's just hilarious it if we put ourselves in check and see how much of that we do in our own personal lives so you know and i've been talking about it week after week on my live streams and like i know it creates this tension in some people because they're not ready to like they're not ready to hear that you know they're not and it's the mechanism of hope there's this there's this like there's this hope mechanism and i tell people this is one thing that i say i try to remind people quite often hope is the rope and that rope will eventually be what hangs you yeah uh, that's a good one like it, it's just your noose so yeah. like you gotta like get rid of that today and be here today because if you think that there's going to be some new positive sensation for you internally because of Joe Biden getting arrested, you're a psychopath. <laughs> like I'll just let you know right now, you're 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 consumed by an idea that it, it was never part of your life. It will never be part of your life. It will never change your life. And just you feeling that you can assume you'll have some sort of positive sensation from it occurring um says something about you yeah yeah because it's because like, just yeah. just to have that energy means that you probably share that same energy with other people that you don't know and that's really unfortunate and i think that that's a form of judgment that's dark and you're going to need to eventually come to terms with that yeah yeah uh so this is the time to put yourself in check ladies and gentlemen not not get angry at what i'm saying or what jordan's saying and again these are just our opinions so you're free to do whatever you want um and you know a lot of our opinions uh get attacked because people are st they 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 are embedded into the mainstream and they got to have that juice so when you take yourself away from that you just become more of an observer than a player of the mainstream, it's it's a game changer. Because you you we've talked about this so much about how much time do you spend churning your lead to gold to these organizations that you'll never get paid a dollar for, um, versus if you were to take all that energy back and put it into 
like being a content creator or be going out there and maybe, maybe you're maybe you're born to be a musician but you're not doing it because you're too embedded into the mainstream and you're giving that all your gas and you could have some lyrics written you could have some songs written but you, mm. you feel like well no my lead to gold is more important because i gotta wake people up i gotta go i gotta man it's my job to go wake people up gotta wake up the sheeple you know and uh that led to gold <laughs> exchanges i mean i'm to tell you what man when i see that stuff when i see people like that i don't judge it it makes me grateful because i realize oh, yeah. i used to be there and now i'm not and i'm so grateful i'm not anymore right so everybody i mean that's i was facts. once there man i was once there so and that's the most beautiful thing i think like if i had to remind my, myself of the emails that i receive and the messages that i get of people that are like just making that same realization through finding my work um it really makes me like you know it could like bring tears to my eyes sometimes because i'm like damn you know like it's almost like giving somebody the gift of life back yeah <laughs> yeah for yeah, real yeah. though like for yeah. real though because i know people that are in relationships they have children and they're not even involved in their relationships or their children because they're spending all this time like studying QAnon theories <laughs> trying to figure out when like donald trump is gonna like prevail from the ashes or whatever and i'm like yo you guys could keep doing that all you want but like you're these oh, the time is the the present moment is slipping through your fingers like sand and you're the one pouring the sand you're the one you're the hands you're the fucking floor beneath where the the sand is being you know caught on you're the you're everything you know and and once you realize that you're part of this unity consciousness and yeah. that you have an opportunity to break away from the duality consciousness this left and right red and blue bullshit like once you realize that that's all a game to keep both people playing tug of war with an invisible rope yeah. you know it's a it's a huge smack in the face but i think it's the ultimate smack in the face because no one's ever going to wake you up from that it's something that you like you need to pour water on your own face yeah i mean i think i think most people today they they live as though they have a brand new car but they're just waiting for it to break down like they drive around this brand new car and they're just their whole life is suspended around this thing's going to break down any minute it's a brand new car but it's going to break down any minute and they live their life through that and it's all you know it's all suspense fear-based thriller edgier seat kind of life which is that's totally fine if you want to be an adrenaline junkie and go bungee jumping and you know all that kind of stuff but when you're giving your lead to gold when you're giving your gold to the energies on the world stage just you know thinking that you're going to make a change uh out in the world uh, you know shouting from the rooftops got to share this got to tell everybody that it's literally the same thing as you know you're living your life as if your your, your car is going to break down any minute and you're like i just i got to make sure i have enough here i got to make sure i'm prepared for this i got to make sure you, yeah. there's no way you can do any of that stuff because there's no way you can you know nobody has a crystal ball I mean, that's really where it's at, I think. And you can get it with, I mean, supposedly the Vatican has a device called the chronovisor, which, you know, I mean, obviously it's, <laughs> it's literally there. called the chronovisor. It's called the chronovisor. <laughs> yeah, go look it up. <laughs> oh, that's amazing, dude. It is. It Your is. car concept that you're talking about is something that I, I, I speak about quite often. And uh, one of the ideas that I share, which is kind of a, you know, it's a unique take on things, but I talk about how your your ego is kind of like your gas tank and and the gasoline is prana it's like life force energy and it's coming in from all angles the prana right mm -hmm. it could either be stuff that you're consuming it could be stuff that you're generating however however it works but most beings in this world are literally driving a car that that has an infinite uh gas light on like what you just said like yeah. literally great their gas light is on and they don't have the they don't have the insight to actually be aware that they can decide to patch up the holes on their damaged gas tank and when the ego becomes so damaged like really really when the self esteem is at like an all time low and the sense of purpose is almost non existent what happens is you're basically getting prana from whatever angle and it's going into the gas tank and it's just leaking out so when you're when you're really damaged when you're a really hurt individual 
this is like it's hard because you're gonna want to numb now right you 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 just you forfeit to things that numb you and humans are just skeletons with emotions who don't want to feel so once they start to feel they start to react to that by a numbing agent that could be the porn the virtual reality the TikTok, the scrolling through their phone endlessly the playing video games or projecting hate onto others drama etc so like when I think of people who have the most damaged egos, I think of people like drama queens and people who are just like always trying, always talking shit about other people, haters, you know, that's like the the definition of it. People that just are just filled with hate and they're always projecting it, always projecting their fears externally mm -hmm. because their gas tank is damaged and they they're they're just hoping for prana from somewhere. And the only way they can get it is through either a, a validation mechanism or through getting people aggravated and angry and creating drama, right? So I've thought about this a yeah. lot, like how people are literally driving around a car with the gaslight always on. <sighs> and think about how you feel when you're in a car with the gaslight on. The only thing that matters to you is getting to the gas station. Yeah, that's a great You enough. will start to change your driving behavior. Yep. You'll start to change the way that you interact with the stoplight, with the stop sign. You'll Everything yep. starts to, your own sense of being gets more tense. Yep. You might have to feel, you might feel sick to your stomach just with the idea. If you were on a road trip and you were driving down a country road and your gas light turned on, you'd fucking start to freak <laughs> out, right? I, that's I think how we've people all been there. are living. Yeah, that's, that's a great how people analogy. are living their life. Yeah, yeah, and that that's why I, I I talk about how they're this idea from lead to gold or lead into gold is that one being is primarily existing and the other being is living, and when you're living, you're not worried about your gas tanks full or empty. You're just confident that you you have a gas tank, you have prana. You have the ability to tap into, you know, your own awareness and gnosis, and you'll be protected at all costs because you emit a frequency of love. Yeah. But when you're existing, you're just always in that tug of war of fear and, and validation and wanting acceptance. And, and it could get to be a very slippery slope. So, so much so to the point where you, you feel like your gas tank is just always infinitely barely full. Yeah. No, that's a that's a great analogy because I mean, I think anybody here has that has been in a car that has driven has probably experienced a time in their lives when the gas light came on and you're you're pushing it like, "Oh, I got 20 miles." And then, you know, you're getting down to the, you know, and if you run out of gas, like that's a game changer. Like if you're in the middle of nowhere and you run out of gas, you're like swearing, you're kicking the tire, you're pissed. Yeah. And then if someone makes someone if someone were to call you on the phone, right? That that you would normally be really peaceful and 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 beautiful to. You make it on the phone and just then all of a sudden they feel the pressurized squeeze of your personality at that point. And that's the big thing that it's in this stage of the game is that are people really getting the part of you that, as you say, that are living? Because when you're living, mm -hmm. especially in the now moment, not giving your energy and your gas away to the mainstream you now are living from a higher frequency, a higher perspective. And so when someone calls you on the phone, you know, you're not like, you're not an irritated, you know, intolerant human being, you're more compassionate and loving. And that's how, that's how you win this game. If there is such a thing, um, at least the most bliss, let's not even talk about winning. How about the most blissful way to experience life is to be just like blood, which is slightly love, slightly alkaline. And when you're there, you can just observe without passing judgment, without getting involved in the game, et cetera, et cetera. And these are key points. I feel um, playing the, playing this, 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 this life out that we have, you know, as a human being, as this avatar. Um, so I think really neutrality is what I have been saying for so long now. I think that's really the best way to experience this game because you're not looking at the, the gaslight, right? So it would come into play. Like imagine your gas tank is at half half full all the time, you know, like you, there's no worries, you know, or full. You're not worried about having to stop anywhere. There's no interruptions. Um, you know, the irritation. Yeah, you're just coasting. Yeah, you're, you're coasting. coasting. Yep. And like okay. this is this is not advice to anyone, but if if you're somebody who's capable of looking yourself in the mirror and saying, 
Yeah, I live my life as if my my tank is always on E. If you could really do that and look at yourself and say, you know, I've been driving around a car with a gas light on all day, every day before I go to sleep and from the second I wake up, my advice to you is stop trying to find more gas. Stop trying to find the gas station. Let your fucking car screech to a halt. Run out of gas. Feel what that feels like. Instead of trying to run away from the so-called problem or the idea of failure or the idea of, uh, you know, making a mistake, how about you just embrace the chaos, like embrace your unknowing, embrace your fear. And I believe letting your car run out of gas is probably the optimal uh, opportunity for you to actually make a change. Because when you're always riding around with that tank on, on empty, and then you're just going to fill up with this with this artificial prana of Instagram and TikTok and just consuming, 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 eating food, binging, you know, etc. Well, it's just pouring right out of the holes. You know, it's like a, it's like trying to pour water into a colander. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let the fucking gas tank run out, like feel what it feels like for once and stop trying to numb all the feelings that show up in your life. Cause when you actually go through that moment, I mean, that's where the real transmutation happens because that forces you to change. When your car in reality really runs out of gas and you're sitting there with the car on the side of the road and it's not moving anymore, that's where you start to change your behavior. Totally. Yeah, you're going to make massive change. Yeah, that's a great point. Letting your, I mean, that would be equivalent to letting yourself hit rock bottom. I mean, how many people here that are listening have hit what they would describe as rock bottom? And then the only way to go, the only way really to go is up to get out of rock bottom. Either you stay in rock bottom and completely disintegrate and kill yourself, you know, not necessarily killing yourself, but you're, you're just now just basically surviving on the world stage, a miserable human being, or you take that context of what Jordan said of running out of gas, let it run out of gas and then be present in the moment of, okay, what's going on around me? How does this feel? And then knowing that, okay, I don't want to go. Cause we can correlate this to being somebody who's asleep or people call sheeple, right? I was once one mm -hmm. of those people, right? And now I look at those people and I don't judge them. Cause I'm like, I used to be there. That's running out of gas. That's the content. Like when you awaken, from your slumber when you realize how this reality works and then you look back at where you were and you could say well okay i was asleep back then okay great you can see that like being asleep is like driving around with your gas light to get the, the yellow light on all the time the amber light like you had described or driving around with your check engine light all the time like you're driving around in a car it's got two hundred thousand miles and the check engine lights on you got you know you got a a donut on the front a donut on the back no car insurance. That's how some people live their lives in that context. And then they take that energy and they go project that onto the world stage. And the only thing they can be in like frequency with is the mainstream because that's how the mainstream stream is right now. It's like driving around in a car, 200,000 miles, the brakes are going, no car insurance, two donuts on the car. I mean, that's the layer and level of consciousness <laughs> you're driving around in, and that's what the mainstream is. So that's what you're joining with. So I don't like, you know, yeah. <laughs> Bro, you're making me laugh so hard right now because I'm thinking about that Louis C.K. joke where he's talking about like how the most misery you could possibly experience is having a, a garbage bag for a, for a window on your car. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you don't even know the levels of shit misery when you have, he's like, what's worse, two garbage bags for windows? <laughs> And you said the two donuts and that just got me, bro. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, here's the thing, like, here's the thing. And I think, and I, and I want to talk about this more. It's like, when I say embrace rock, cause you said rock bottom, like after what I said, and, and now we could combine our ideas. And when we think about embracing rock bottom, what do you think is the most beautiful alchemical experience that could possibly exist? Right. It's like actually going through some shit in life for once. Yeah. We have too comfy of lives, bro. Like when we want food, we just fucking order it on a phone app. Yeah. Like our lives are too comfortable. Like until you're out there, like 
with a, a shovel, like, you know, getting some, some rhubarbs out of the ground, like, because you absolutely need it. <laughs> you yeah. know, like most of us are living a super comfortable life. So I think like one of the mechanisms for change in this world might be you actually going out of your way to create some discomfort. Yeah. So that's what changed my life, brother. When I lost all my, when I lost one of my businesses, well, I needed to make some money. So what am I going to do? I can't reach out to mommy. Yep. <laughs> I can't reach out there. I have no, I have no help. I had no help in life and I'm happy that I didn't because it required me to take personal responsibility and change my fucking life. Yep. And the byproduct of that was a better business. And then that had its moment. And then what came from that was a better business. And I just continued to refine as I went, not complaining as much with every new endeavor. There was definitely complaints at first because no one wants to feel discomfort. No one actually wants to feel like their car is running out of gas. When your car starts to run out of gas and somebody cuts you off, you're even more aggravated than if you had a full tank of gas and yeah. somebody cut you off. Yep. It just adds to the bullshit of life. Yep. So That's I think we're speaking that. very real here, you know, and I think these are the messages that that resonate most with people. And I'm being candid and saying, you know, I've been there too, man. And that's how I'm able to articulate it in this fashion and how I'm able to, you know, it, it's like an experiential thing. So I know what it feels like to let my gas tank completely run out <laughs> and to be like lonely and to be and have to like, I love the word bricolage, uh, this word uh, for the <laughs> listeners that don't know, bricolage essentially means being able to create something with what's available. And if I took away your computer, I took away your television. I took away as much as you had, you know, that to stimulate you, the things that used to stimulate you. I guarantee you in your own silence, in your own loneliness, you'd become super fucking creative because you would have nothing to consume. Yeah. <laughs> so just, just through forcing yourself into that, I think could be a beautiful practice for some people, just like taking ayahuasca or mushrooms or going on a silent retreat or et cetera. Yeah. No, totally. I think that this is a bit, this is a big point here with this whole lead to gold topic. Um, and, and where personally, all you listening, where are you at with this? What experiences have you gone through that have perpetuated into a state of, you know, high, high vibe, as, as Jordan said, you know, for me, I mean, I've been through many of those scenarios where, you know, the ships got burned, I ran out of gas. Um, I mean, even when I went, when I went in the military, when I joined the Air Force out of high school, I remember vividly when I went into boot camp in Texas, San Antonio, Texas, I went to boot camp. And I, at that time, I was wearing contact lenses. And when I, when I got to boot camp, I didn't have any glasses. And um, when I got there, it was like early, early in the morning and we all got off the bus. And I, you know, no one's, no one knows what to expect. And then, you know, within a short period of time, you got a drill sergeant screaming at the top of his lungs at you. Right. And you're now, you're a young, I was what, 19, 18. Uh, you're this, you know, you're, I literally, I was so sore for the, the next three days, my whole body from being tensed up in, in the state of being at attention in the military, right? You stand at attention, your, your hands are by your side. I was locked up and my whole, all my whole body ached for days because I wasn't used to, I was in the state of fear. And then yeah. not only that, but my contact lenses, I couldn't wear them. So I, and I can't see without them. So for days, I'm not only living in a state of fear, but I can't see like everything's freaking blurry for like a week until I got my glasses. It was like, the, it was a really, and that literally was like running out of, that was like fear mode for a whole week. Not, and, and not know until you get accustomed to it, till you conform to it. And so I correlate that to being in like a baptism of fire position where you're in a really crappy space in life. And some people never get out of that space because all they're doing is exchanging their lead to gold onto the world stage so they can feel better because, well, that's worse than my life. And it's their fault. And they're the reason why my life sucks. And they're the reason why I don't have what I want. And it's just the blame game. And, you know, oh, so brilliant. Knows, 
everybody knows how that feels you know or what we talked about here but that was just a huge experience a, re a big revelation for me on how correlation of the the gas tank and i was doing that during boot camp yeah. it was scary right but then i then i got it i grew out of it and then it became kind of enjoyable you know so I, there's I hope two that... things there's two things building off of what you said one i loved how you were talking about how like there's this natural innate reaction to want to blame and say how like others are creating a shitty environment for you or it's others people that are like creating this and then on top of that there's another mechanism of people who when they start to feel down or they start to feel like they're entering depression or something is going wrong in their life they start to look at people with a worse life than them to compare that to yep. and be like well at least it's not that shitty yep. you know and like those two things are massive um you know like if i had to rate them on my hierarchy of damaged ego those are at the top when yep. you start to resort to like blame it's the same thing as resorting to comparing your situation to someone else's to somehow feel better about your shitty situation. And those are obvious mechanisms that we use in this world. And I think me and you might have talked about that guy, uh, Liver King. I'm not trying yeah, to give this guy any of my prana. You, 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 I'm not trying to give this guy any of my energy, but I just brought up the idea um, because he was an individual who like allegedly was trying to help people who mostly males who were suicidal and going through depression, mm. et cetera. And he was clearly taking steroids, clearly on gear. And he admitted to it just quite recently, like two days ago, he finally came out and admitted that, yes, I'm taking PEDs. And um, I was doing it because whatever reason but he he made a huge mistake by saying that the bigger problem was the depression in the men and he believed that that was somehow justifying his use of having this body type that no one could achieve unless you were enhanced so he is such he his ego is so damaged and he's in such a level of delusion that he's come up with this concept of I'm helping, but ultimately I'm unaware of how I'm manipulating people with my insanely unimaginable in an organic fashion body composition, uh -huh. which is an even bigger problem because men are a lot different than women in this one regard. We are always, you know, like we don't get to select, so it's already difficult, right? Women get to select. It's a lot easier for them to get a mate. Men have to work much harder. One of the number one mechanisms would be having a better body composition. So men are always looking up to people who look more f males that are more physically attractive because we know that's one of the easier ways to get a woman. Yep. So he, he has 250 pounds of solid muscle with no body fat, and he is unaware that that's actually creating a bigger problem for these men. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. He thinks not. he thinks his message is somehow justifying uh and that's more important, but his whole marketing tactic is his body and this nonsense that he shares about diet and nutrition which is completely misleading and inaccurate because at the end of the day the reason he looks the way he does is because he's taking a shit ton of gear. Yep. Yep. I mean, I I speak from experience cuz I've been there. You know, I was a competitive bodybuilder and uh I mean, it's just People, you, you know why guys don't want to admit they're on gear because then people would look at them differently it and really life is about looking good that's you know thank you Werner Erhard and Landmark so really if you look at life it's it's everybody's walking around hoping that no one thinks they look bad and so if you if you go say yeah I'm, I'm taking gear and you're marketing yourself I mean one of the biggest marketers that I respected biggest influencers bodybuilder wise this guy named rich pena um and he was he admitted everything he ended up dying okay not too long ago yeah uh, but he he was so authentic with i'm taking this i'm taking that i don't suggest you do it but he was i mean this is a, this is a big thing because like i'm a huge fan of this show that i just finished not too long ago called billions and it's a show about hedge funds and it's really a show about playing the game of life heavy 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 
But in that show, the prosecuting attorney who's after this guy throughout the whole show to try to arrest him and get him on something, he ends up coming out to the public while running for office that he's into sadomasochism, right, in, right on the camera. And he, 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 the reason why he admitted it was because his competition was going to expose him. And he thought, well, maybe the hand to play here is, I'm just gonna be honest. I'm just gonna tell the world, this is what I am. And that's what he did. And I, the, the context of that, of Lead to Gold, was he let go of all this hiddenness in him and he let it all ride. And then there was nothing left for anybody to smash him with. And on top of that, here's the real me. This, here's me, mm -hmm. here I am. Here's all my damagedness, because we all have, and especially the people that are slinging uh, out on the world stage of trying to, it's their fault, it's them, it's they. Typically, those are the people that have the most damage that they need to work on. They don't want to work on it. They just want to sweep it under the rug. So if you're listening to this yeah. message, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for you to be authentic and honest in your life with the people you surround yourself with. I mean, you're not going to tell everybody all your skeletons in your closet, but really you should be dumping all that stuff out and just stand up and say, this is me. This is who I am. Instead of creating an avatar that doesn't look like you at all, because that's called catfishing, right? That whole concept. And that, <laughs> that's a, there's a lot of that going on right now. People People just they're not they bro this like is that. something we talked about with aquarius right we talked about that yep. like how aquarius is all about like you're not going to be able to be a fake you're not going to be able to be a fraud yep yeah unless we move completely like you're not going to get away individual. with it yeah i mean if we're unless yeah well we're that'll, be the, into a that'll be the virtual reality point. Yeah, that may be the separation point mm -hmm. where you can go into the virtual reality mm -hmm. world and maybe you hate yourself that much if there is a choice, if there's a fork in the road to choose human versus digital, and you don't like yourself that much, which is total, maybe totally fine. Like maybe your journey is like, well, you know what? I, I don't like my body. I don't like my face. I don't like my nose, whatever, whatever it is that you don't like, or you can have the choice to move into a digital world. You can become a perfect looking human being. You can get enhanced this, enhance that. You know, you don't need to shoot steroids or get implants. You can be whatever it is you want to be in the digital world. That's kind of where seemingly where human beings are going but is there going to be a fork in the road that's kind of the big question mark here i don't i don't know but it is a part of led to that, go for sure and and to and to bring it full circle you know what i spoke about moments ago with like the liver king is like he was embodying leadership but his, his intention was maybe his intention was there but the marketing and the gimmick behind it was yeah. see-through for anyone who who also is a leader so yep. the only people who are going to fall for his shit are people who are followers. And this is important about stepping into leadership. And when we say leadership, we're not talking about becoming a fucking CEO. Like being a leader could just simply be a really incredibly present mother. That's a leader. Yep. Just being present with your children. Yep. That's the most beautiful thing I think you could ever offer to this world. I agree. So when we say leader, we just mean taking ownership of your fucking purpose. And if you have a child, that's your purpose right now. If you're a CEO, sure, that could be your purpose at that moment. If you're a farmer, then the land in harvest is your purpose at that moment. Embrace it, be there with it, and be 110% in it. And you will get the output from the input that you've, you know. So the bigger point here is that when you, when you cascade into this role of leader, whatever that means, like for you, I mean, I just laid out my definition for it and I really feel like I embody that position totally. with that, you know, you need to be aware of when there's these cracks and fissures in your, either the product that you sell or the art that you create or the theories that you have or whatever. And I actually got inspired by that liver King guy of what I, sh what I don't want to be. Yeah. I actually get inspired by these individuals. I have no hate. Uh, to throw at this man because i'm a leader i saw through that gimmick i don't even need to study it i just know it for what it is yeah and it's it's taken me some time to get there and i say that with no hubris like i'm really like trying to be just aware that there's something to take from all things and that's where belief and resonation become a huge part of the idea of of how we consume you know i i try to remind people quite often that you don't want to really believe externally you save your belief for yourself and you resonate with everything else and this is a very important you know ability because if you remind yourself of this when you're consuming 
then you never fall for shit. You're either taking what matters to you and you're leaving the rest, or you're just completely like giving self to it. And that's where we have these problems with the savior complex. And, you know, um, I don't want to, I don't want to go too far down that road, but I believe when we think about people like liver King, 99% of his, cons of the people consuming his message had us, they have a, their, they have a savior complex and they looked at him as their savior for that moment. And now they got taught that from the snake oil salesman himself, what he's really about and what his real, like, you know, and, and now they have to make a decision, you know, and that, that, that's problematic. So when I'm looking at leadership, I'm just observing them and I'm saying, what do I want to extract from this? And what do I want to disregard? Yeah. And there's so much personality, like that cult of personality that plays in, into this. And, you know, I think that's on the influencer, on the influencer stage, it's easy to ride that prana wave. Um, but that prana wave can come and consume you. And we've seen that happen quite a bit with people on in this position that me and you have where they're content creators or they're the lead singer of a band or whatever the fuck and their own chase for prana consumes them and mm -hmm. they just become a victim to their followers and their subscribers and they stop being their genuine self and they start becoming the chameleon they start just taking on the advices and critic uh, uh, criticism of the crowd and letting it get the best of them they let the hate get the best of them instead of transmuting it yeah yeah, I mean the whole that whole I never I I saw the guy before the Liver King until you mentioned it. I never really watched any stuff, but then you just you mentioned it yesterday and went and checked it out. And then I saw, yeah, just a few days ago he he came out. I mean, good for him on coming out and saying I lied. You know, and and what a relief that probably was for that guy. Cause he finally was able to say, Yeah, I take gear. Um Yeah. You know, and I mean, will he lose subscribers? Yeah. But I, I don't think he'll lose his whole kingdom. I think coming out so good for him. I, you know, his intentions there, hopefully his intentions of his led to gold, the releasing of this energy was uh, purposely done for, you know, for helping people and just being an authentic human being. And I think that's really where it's at in this day and age of led to gold. How authentic are you? How much are you holding back based upon how people are going to look at you, how people are going to judge you? And then what you, when you bottle all that up, then you go seek out, you know, who's duping you, the world stage, getting involved with the mainstream, just so you can feel better about your life. Cause you don't want to do anything about it. As you mentioned earlier, people get complacent when they get comfortable. See, that's why like fear is the number one emotion that runs this reality. It's not love, it's fear. That's like when you get into a relationship and you go through the honeymoon stage, you know, like you'll, you'll go on a date, you'll get dressed, you'll change outfits five times, you, you know, you whatever, you know, you'll, you'll do the craziest things you would never do two years down the, down the line in a relationship. So you'll conform. That's what love does. You, you're all in shape when you meet your partner and then you give two years and now you're this fat slob. What happened? Because you conform to love. Like, you like, oh, I don't need to impress anymore. I don't need to look my best anymore because now I got love in my life. So you you literally let, let yourself go, right? So and then what do you what do you, what are those of you that get out of the relationship? What do you end up doing? You go you're signing up for the gym, you get in a membership again. You're get trying to get in shape again. You're trying to look your best. Mm -hmm. Got to melt the body fat. Got to get in shape for the pool parties. <laughs> you know whatever it is you got to do to look good, because now you're out there chasing ass again. You're chasing the tail, or the tail you're chasing the whatever whatever sex you are. Yeah. And now you're led to gold is fixated on once again, just sweeping your shit under the rug and not working on your shadow self to transmute that energy, to become a Taurus field of, of bliss. Cause you're a mini Taurus mm. field as a, and you're led to gold is you, you are the led to gold. Your body is led to gold. If you want to use the chakras, it's the root to the crown and it's just a cycle. And it just moves and yeah. it spins and it, it like it spins like a rotary like a rotor motor it spins like that and that's your lead to gold so you're transmuting that energy and then you have all this other energy coming at you from outside exterior pieces uh that you're gonna have to deal with that you know the hater we talked about the haters so much you know those of you that are haters of our channels 
bring it. I just say you're a rookie because you don't understand how the things work. Uh, haters, they just transmute the energy. It's beautiful. There's a part to hate that keeps you tethered to it because it, it's like its own, um, it's like its own form of prana. Yeah, like it's kind of coming back to what you said before, like this matrix, the simulacrum, it, its number one gasoline is fear. Totally. And what reveals it as a matrix or simulation is love. Like love is the detergent to clean the fucking shitty, you know, like the the mud stained you know mosaic yep <laughs> and you start to see that there's like yeah but ben, beneath that beneath the rubble there is something but hey it's rubble you have to fucking piece it back together as you wish as you desire and that's where the alchemy and the magic and and the you know the wizardry comes into play because you see everything as opportunity now you're not just like standing over a pile of rubble and complaining about it you know, you're you're excavating and you're you're readjusting and refining as you rebuild. But that's all this is because we're brought into this world and taught. So we have to go through unlearning. And I rather I, I was actually on a client call this morning and I said to them, uh, when I consume content, uh, a, a tactic that I do now is instead of going into anything I consume as I want to learn something, I actually go into what I'm about to consume and say, what am I going to unlearn right now? Mm -hmm. And that's been a little, a little like change in the way that I've gone about it. Right. And one of the other things is I'm a foodie. Like I love food. I'm, I'm, I'm a chef. I love cooking. I'm obsessed with it. And when I was really like practicing it a lot and getting new to it all, I would judge a lot when I ate other people's food. And uh, then I learned how to make all of those foods that I was interested in. And I learned how fucking difficult it was. And mm. then I, st I stopped judging it. I learned how to create it myself. And I was like, damn, this is fucking difficult. Like, who am I to <laughs> cast judgment? Yeah, this is insane. You know, to cook like pizza from scratch, like make your own dough. Even that is like such an art form. Yep. And yet it's a common food that is just, you could find it anywhere. Even in New York, where I was born, we have dollar slices. You get jaded. You just don't know. Yeah. And then you go and make it yourself and you're like, oh, damn, you know, you have a new respect for it. Yeah. So that's kind of what I mean about like this whole process. You come to this realm and, and you're taught and you have to kind of put in the work to unlearn. But there's nothing new that you're you're gathering here. It's like you're wiping away the amnesia seems to be what we're really going through that that's a that's a big thing i loved your detergent uh analogy it was it was beautiful because it goes into the dirty laundry you know that great song by don henley dirty laundry one of my favorites the news uh and and i think if you just use this example of what jordan said the detergent is what washes all the garbage away so when you have your dirty lawn, like here in Mexico, I, I take my laundry down the street and they do it for me. It's one of the perks here, right? I, so it's, it's beautiful, right? Um, but when I take my laundry there, it's dirty laundry. And then I give it to them and then they wash it and then they bag it and then I bring it home and I got fresh laundry and I can wear it again. And that's how this reality works. That's led to gold. And when you go buy a new outfit, that's that's a, a new layer that's going to get dirty eventually. You're going to have to wash it, dry clean it, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just always going to be on that wash and repeat. But most people, if you use this context, they never wash their clothes. They just freaking focus on the dirty laundry and they just recycle the dirty. They never clean the clothes. Or they or they ran they ran out of detergent. <laughs> yeah, they ran out of detergent. Yeah. And the detergent <laughs> is analyzing the reality, saying, okay, well, maybe, you know, it's time to clean this. Like, like how many of you own a car and like do you have do you just never wash it? That's what that's what most people live their lives at. They just never wash their car. And then they go around complaining they're waiting about waiting for the they're waiting for the rain to wash it, bro. Yeah, they're waiting for Jesus to come to wash their car, you know? Yeah, exactly. They're waiting for that holy water to come fall from the heavens. Yeah, the dove to fall from the sky. <laughs> Dude, that just reminded me of a you know that show Midnight Gospel? Have you ever heard of it? 
No, what is that? Okay, it's it's by this. Uh, I mean, I don't know who the animators are, but it's essentially a podcast from Duncan Trussell, who's a comedian, and he's quite uh, an interesting guy because he's gone into alchemy and studied under uh, some people who are actually practicing magic, ceremonial magic, and um, so he's he's really spiritual and an interesting guy, and he's very candid about the trials and tribulations of his life and he has a show that i think it's on netflix or one of those streaming platforms Mm -hmm. and it's his podcasts that an animator has taken and like they made a cartoon out of it like almost like an anime kind of animation but it's very trippy it's like very you know like it's really trippy looking and uh it's deep like one there's a couple episodes that i know you would absolutely love but uh what we just talked about over the last 15 minutes was something that like if somebody could take it and create a cartoon (laughs) like (laughs) it would be the most amazing tv show because it was that's exactly how how his podcast was it was like a conversation between him and another person and they turned it they have a cartoon animation basically playing out the the imagery of their conversation and it, it really reminded me of one of the episodes in that in that tv show oh i love it i love it well i mean so the detergent in the rain and like all these uh all these uh descriptors that we're giving yeah yeah i mean i i honestly just the more i observe reality the more i laugh about it um and i know there's horrific things on the world stage this is this is another contact people uh, th- i get this like well, you know, there's children, this and this is happening. And I, I, that that's always happening. What do you, I mean, that's, all, it's, you know, I mean, what am I going to do? Just stay in that state of compression of observing that and just being in a state of misery because it's happening on the world stage? Or do I make the, because tr- I'm not vibrating at a high frequency when I'm focusing on that kind of compression, you know? So, so do you want to stay in that? Do you want to create from that space of just like being on that level of frequency? I mean, it's horrific that these things happen, ladies and gentlemen. That's led to gold as well. That feeds this machine. So, you know, you got to take into consideration. You're in the dark age right now. What do you what do you think is happening on the world? What do you everything's go, everything goes. Everything's crazy, gangbusters, everything is nuts. There's a lot of there's a lot of darkness on the world. Yeah, because you're in the dark age. You know? It's not gonna last. The detergent's gonna come out, like Jordan said, and the clothes are gonna get washed. And then everybody's going to be merry again, walking around with some clean clothes. Some of you haven't had clean clothes in forever and you're going to finally smell good. Right. But I mean, that's just something to look forward to, I guess, but you got to, but just, just remember though, like the purification process, the purification process reveals some serious, like some serious shit on the other side. And that's why I said like, you know, like once it gets washed clean, you start to see it for what it actually is. You feel me? Like we're hiding behind so much of our own trauma and our own inability to let go. So like, just remember family, like when you go through this purification phase, you're going to start to see that like, oh yeah, my clothes are, my clothes are clean now, but I have all these rips and tears. There's some sewing I'm going to have to do. Okay. It's stretched out. It's out of size. Like you're going to have to like really see it finally. And the one thing I, I, I said a while back and it came to me from a mushroom trip was I, it, I did, uh, I had a really big mushroom trip in the winter time. And while I was really peaking in this uh, trip, I was looking out at the trees and the trees had no leaves on them. And I just had this realization. I was like, wow, humans are like trees who never want to give up their leaves. Uh. Yeah. And it was like beautiful to see the cyclical, the cyclicality or, or whatever's going on in nature, that's death and the rebirth. And that's why all the religions are based on the sun, obviously. That's why the savior is always given like this title of the the light. And I think it's just so amazing how it's our inability to embrace the darkness, our inability to embrace the 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 winter our inability to let go of our leaves yeah and once you let go of all that shit you finally now have this clarity when you let go of your materialism when you let go of all those damaged parts of your ego like how many people just buy more shit to feel better about their unfortunate existence yep they think having more stuff is somehow going to bring them a, a, a fulfillment like just to let you know like more money <laughs> just solves money problems. More materials just make you heavier. Like they just yep. hold you down more. Yep. Um, and I think like there's a beauty, there's a beauty to just being 
okay with just yourself you know like to just be fucking okay with it yep. not needing to like spend every dollar or every second of your life looking outward they need to just take that moment to be a tree who lets go of its leaves and to own it you know to really be okay there and to not be ashamed and uh if you look at any of the cults and religions and a lot of the stuff that's going on that has to deal with brainwashing and mind control it's all about making people so addicted to safety and this idea of maintaining like the maintenance of of, of comfortability you feel me and that's yep. why the the c scam worked so well with getting people to wear masks and all that shit because yep. they just kept drilling into people's psyche all day like stay safe stay six feet away wear four masks whatever like they just kept saying that over and over and over and over again and giving false you know information that was tied in incredible marketing tactics so it worked as all things do doesn't need to be true it just needs to be marketed well marketing so everything yeah. any yeah everyone who's coming to this podcast is quite aware of what i'm saying but take it for what it is and apply it to self and that's where we have the ability to transmute you know to actually turn this around on us and say hey you know what people what the quote unquote sheeple fell for with with the c scam i've fell for before in my own stuff and i need to take i need to look at myself like dead in the eyes and say okay you know you're you're part of that too man and you don't get a get out of jail free card in this one like there is some work to be done and the odds are like there are some of the most amazing realizations in that nakedness as i said before to be the tree without its leaves to really just let it all go to reveal um last thing i'll say on that is i really feel like if the enlightenment could be anything it's just the great admission it's just one's own ability to admit Oof. yeah admit that word admit adding to your mitt yeah <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, to me, a tree, a leaves don't ask the tree if it can fall. The leaves just fall. They don't, there's like, hey, tree, can I, can I leave now? Can I, can I take off the branch? Can I take, can I go out? You know, they just leave, they fall, right? So just, you, you don't need to get permission to make your changes, folks. Just, just go do it. You know, I, I love the quote by, by Albert. He said that uh, God, God won't look over you for medals or, or degrees, but for scars, you know? Um, no one's counting your trophies and, you know, how much money you got. It's, that's not where it's at. Um, and going on the context, the last thing I wanted to say on the laundry is, yeah, most people, they just go buy new outfits. They'll just buy more outfits and they just keep collecting dirty laundry and the laundry gets bigger and bigger and the closet gets more fuller and more fuller. Next thing you know, they're pack rats and, you know, a lot of you have clothes that used to probably have the tax You maxed out one credit there. card, go apply for a new one. Yeah, go apply for a new one. And you think <laughs> that's going to make you happy. And, you know, then you get to the point where you realize, like, my this led to gold thing. I, I got enough gold here and, and this jewelry and it's just not cutting it anymore. So maybe it's time you tear it down. Give it all away. Give some of it away. And then focus on, because, you know, I, lo I love, like, I'm a huge landmark proponent. I love her, Werner Erhard. And he had said, and I've said, you know, like, you know, you're never going to get happy. Like you just, you, you're, and that's true because the honeymoon stage, like you, you fall in love and then it's two years later. It's not the same. It's just not the same, man. You know, and, and it's different. And I don't care this. I know people, there are people out there like, no, we're still this. No, you know, you're not. You're, the first <laughs> kiss is there's, you can't compare that to two year kiss later down the line. It's just not the same. You know, like, don't tell me that your 200,000 mile car is just as good as someone placing a brand new one right next to it. Tell me which one you wouldn't choose if you had the option to choose it. You wouldn't choose the 200,000 mile car. You choose the new one every single time each and every one of you would do it, right? So there is that aspect of conformity, this whole lead to gold thing, like it's always churning your life. It's churning. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta constantly be observing your now moment and focus on your lead to the gold you know so that's my my kind of my parting ways i guess so yeah. go ahead jordan the the last thing the last thing i'll say on that is i've I talked about this in uh, a lot of my transmissions this idea that happiness is just relief 
Mm. Happiness is like when you really need to take a piss and you finally get to the toilet. <laughs> That's all happiness is. And then you're done taking the piss and then the happiness is gone. Yeah. yeah That's most all people, happiness most is. People, it's relief. Most people are walking around like they, ha- they got to take a piss and they can't. <laughs> <laughs> like most, I, most I made this realization and that's why I... <laughs> like, yeah, you it's know, like 30 you're, ounce you're... slurpee all day I re... my friend I, re... I guess my friend one time man she and she would laugh she would probably kill me for telling I'm going to tell you all this anyway but... one time she was on a detox and she had to go we were on the on the road and she had to go to the bathroom I'm not talking number one either and uh she couldn't she couldn't find one <laughs> and so like it was, she was so desperate that it was side of the road baby you know i mean it was that it was yeah. it was that desperate but you know what people do on the world that's your happiest moment right there that's a ha- oh my god i could the the relief that she got after that happened <laughs> Bro, that's what I'm saying. Like happiness is just relief. That was gold. That was gold. That was her gold at that point. Right that moment after that release, it was this happy. Oh my god, it felt so good. And that was gold. That was that was a true lead to gold moment, right? Um, Bro, you're literally this is this is so perfect because anyone who's seen the movie by by Alejandro Jodorowsky, The Holy Mountain, when the main character meets this like shaman, you know, dude. He teaches, they go through the stages of alchemy. And one of the things he has him do to teach him about it is he makes him take a shit and then he takes his shit and puts it inside of this like chamber system. Mm. And he puts him, he puts him through work, like making him go through exercises and work. And you watch his own shit become gold on the end. Mm. And he showed him, he was like, this is the process. Like the process is taking what you think is waste, what you think is nonsense, what you think is irrelevant, what you think is just something that has no value and watch me teach you through yourself and your action, how we're going to convert that over to literal Mm -hmm. gold. And it's the one of the greatest movies of all time, if not my favorite movie, um, because it is so hidden with esoterica and it's just really a work of art. If anyone hasn't, if anyone wants a movie to watch, that's the one you know that's really the the title again some people have missed it what's the title again it's called the holy mountain by alejandro jordorowski yeah it's incredible um one of the movies that really changed my outlook on cinema and like the really it's really really uh unique and and artistic and it, it just covers all bases and it might be disturbing for some people but I think that it puts a lot of the things that we're usually disturbed by, it puts us, it puts, uh, it like kind of shoves our face in it and says like, Hey, this is a part of you, man. This is something that you're going through. This is something that you have a capability to do. This is a perspective that you've probably had within and you were just ashamed or scared or fearful to share it, you know, and, and that movie really reveals so much, Mm -hmm. but that'd probably be a good place for us to, for us to wrap this up. Because I think that I think leaving off of everything that we've talked about and then having people go watch that movie, I think would be like such an amazing experience for everyone. Well, I'm going to make sure that I is it uh, where 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 is that on? Is it on uh, is it online or the is it on YouTube? Oh, I'm sure I'm sure people will have to find it. uh, I'm going to try to find it and put it in the um, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to try to find that and put it in the description. It may not be right away, but I'll do my best to. um, to find yeah, it. I don't think it'll be on Netflix. It's pretty weird. It's one of those movies that's even like been banned in certain countries. Oh, okay. It's it's a pretty it's a pretty wild one. But the the filmmaker, uh, one of his big claims to fame was coming out with the uh, Doom, uh, a version of Doom. Uh, before it, it never screened, it never got an opportunity to become a movie. But the the actual screenplay and like the ideas behind it, the imagery and some of the costumes and just all the animation. Um, allegedly sparked a lot of what later became things like Star Wars and, you know, some pretty amazing sci-fi movies. And some mm-hmm. of the stuff that we see in sci-fi movies uh, was mostly inspired by Alejandro Jodorowsky's version of Doom. I love and, it. I'm looking at the, sorry. I'm looking at it. came out in 1973, same year that Westworld came out. 73 is the 21st yeah. number. That's pretty, pretty cool. There's a lot of, oh, wow, the symbolism on the film poster. 
Uh, well, it's a man. And this guy's clearly, this guy's okay. clearly a Mason. Like you, you go into his pictures and he's doing all the symbology and like, you know, he knows, he knows right. the craft. He's part of the craft. And that's probably what feeds his ability to explore some of the imagery. And, and, you know, he's, he's a, he's a textbook example of somebody who, although he's part of the craft, he shared art with the world to reveal it. You know, there's no secrets here. It's all in plain sight. It just requires you as a decoder to be able to see it for what it is and to not right. judge it in the process. Right. Right. Interesting. Well, I'll definitely leave the link in there. Um, but this has been a this has been a fun ride. I, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you got something out of this Lead to Gold podcast with Jordan and I. It's one of our shorter ones, but we decided we were going to do that. I know some of you are like, what? what? This is not two, three hours. Yeah, well, this is going to be a shorter one. Um, but I just, for me, I'm going to leave it as, um, my last piece to not take away from the Holy mountain, but, uh, live your life, you know, from a place of bliss, however that you can do that. And, and that'll be your lead to gold to where you can live a life where you're not paying attention to the mainstream and to give you kind of the perk is like, imagine you're on an airplane for five hours and you haven't gone to the bathroom and you got to go really bad. And, you know, I'm one of those people where when I got to go really bad, I can't stand up straight. I'm like leaning over because my bladder is so full. And when you're in that state of consciousness, you're you're the, the, you only have one thing on your mind. That's it, to, to relieve yourself. And some of you are living your life of lead to gold in that state of mind all the time. But you never relieve yourself. So you got to relieve yourself, get into a state of neutrality, and then climb the holy mountain. <laughs> so. <laughs> kind of my, I love that. Love that. <laughs> kind of my lasting words so all right well jordan you got anything else no brother i think we this was short and sweet packed with gems packed with gnosis and i'm excited to share it with everyone and see where it builds into the next podcast that we'll be doing together which i'm absolutely excited about yeah yeah me too all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap for podcast number 10. My name's Logan, Decode Your Reality, Jordan at Waters Above Crypto. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you later.